My Catholic Roots is an online formation series sponsored by the Militia Immaculata, an ecclesial movement founded by St. Maximilian Kolbe. Auschwitz was a concentration camp and an extermination camp. And for the Jews, it was an extermination camp. When they arrived at Auschwitz, they were singled out, told to strip and go into the showers. Except they were not showers. They were extermination bunkers filled with Cyclone B. And there they were suffocated in a matter of minutes, exterminated like so much vermin. For the other prisoners, it was a concentration camp. And there they were told to strip their clothes as well. Their heads were shaved, and they were given a number. They no longer had names. Instead, they were known by their number. And they were branded with their number on their arm, much like you would brand an animal. And sometimes when they would clean the latrines, they put all the sewage from the latrines into the wheelbarrow, and as they would wheel the barrow down the rocky street of Auschwitz, sometimes the sewage would splash up on their face. But they could not stop to wipe it off, because if they did, they'd be beaten. And so the normal, ordinary, everyday actions and attitudes of a human being were stripped from them, and they were treated like animals. And eventually, some of the prisoners even began to act like animals. Until one day, a prisoner escaped from the camps. On that day, all the prisoners from his cell block were lined up in the street of Auschwitz. And they were told to stand there for eight hours in the hot summer sun in August, without any food or water. And if any of the prisoners fell over from exhaustion, they were just dragged away and piled on top of each other like a pile of sticks. In the evening, they were all sent back to the cell block to go to bed without any food, without any dinner. And the next morning, they were lined up again in the street of Auschwitz. But this time, the commandant began to pick prisoners out one by one from the lineup, pick them out like dogs to be sent to the starvation bunker until one prisoner stepped out of line. And that prisoner who stepped out of line was Maximian Colby. By his stepping out of that line, it was the ultimate statement that he was not an animal. It was the ultimate statement that he was a human being with free will who in spite of the hatred and the beatings and the threat of death by starvation still chose to love. Now what in our world threatens to strip us of our humanity, threatens to take away our humanity and turn us into animals. Well, advertising treats us like animals that cannot control our appetites. Pornography treats us like animals that cannot control our passions. Every time we give in to our basest desires and instincts, we begin to become like animals. But the truth is, we are so much more. We are human beings. We are made in the image and the likeness of God. And to say that we are made in the image and likeness of God is to say that love is the reason for our existence. For God is love. Love is our true self. Love is our identity. Love is our true character. Love is our name. And nothing, absolutely nothing, could keep Maximilian from loving. Not hatred, 
not beatings, not the destruction of his beloved Poland, not the dismantling of Nepoklonov and everything he built and strove to create, not even the apparent victory of his enemies, and most of all, not even the threat of death by starvation could keep Maximilian from loving. Do we have the courage to love like him? Do we have the courage to step out of the assembly line of life and declare that we are not animals, we are not consumers, we are not numbers, we are human beings made in the image and likeness of God and that everything we do and everything we say is motivated by love and that love and love alone is the reason for our existence because God is love and therefore love is our name.